Let's take a look at the cash conversion cycle. Now the cash conversion cycle focuses on the time between payments made for materials and labor and the payments received from sales. Now ideally you'd like to have this cash conversion cycle to be as small as possible. Uh, here you have inventory days. Once you produce something, you're going to have inventory. Ideally, you don't want the inventory sitting around for too many days because A, it becomes obsolete if it's a technology good, you know how quickly computers change, or it actually spoils if you're talking about something like produce. You also have a collection period. Most of what's sold is sold on some accounts receivable basis, so or at least much of it is. So ideally you'd like to get paid as quickly as possible and oftentimes you'll find that uh, companies will offer um, their customers discounts for paying quickly. So you'll see something like 210 net 30. That is you get a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days and the balance is due within 30 days. So you want to get paid as quickly as possible and ideally you'd like to be able to stretch your payables period as long as possible. So if you're a strong company, you're in a good negotiating position, for example, a company like Walmart, a lot of uh, suppliers want to do business with Walmart, so Walmart probably dictates the terms of the payment period. So instead of getting paid, instead of paying them every 30 days, perhaps they pay every 60 days or every 90 days. And again, the shorter you can make this, the better. So let's take a look at an example using data from Apple. And I got the data from Morningstar. And the revenues are 233.715 uh, billion dollars. Okay, all these terms are in millions of dollars. The cost of revenues are 140 billion. Receivables in 2014 were 17.46 billion. Receivables in 2015, 16.84 or 85 billion. Inventory, um, 2.111 billion. And uh, inventory in 2015 was 2.349 billion, okay, or 2,349 million. Um, and the payables period, which I just looked up, was 85.87 days. Now, how do you calculate inventory days? Well, you start by calculating inventory turnover, and that's the cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So we'll take the um, cost of goods sold, which was on the previous page, and the reason I had inventory for 2014 and 2015 is I'm going to take an average of those two. So I add them up and divide by two, and if you do this calculation, you get inventory turnover is 62.82. What does that mean? That means that Apple essentially empties out its warehouse or refills its inventory 62 times a year or almost 63 times. If you want to figure out how many days that is, you take 365 and you divide it by um, inventory turnover. So it turns out to be 5.81 days so that's the average amount of time that inventory sits uh, in Apple's warehouse. Okay, It's a very short time period. We can do the same for receivables. To calculate receivables turnover, we take revenues, and then we divide it by average receivables. So the same sort of calculation we just did for uh, inventory turnover. So the revenues of 233 billion divided by the average rece receivables turns out to be 13.62 and again we can convert this into days days sales outstanding is usually the term we take 365 we divide it by receivables turnover we get 26.79 what does that mean that means that when Apple extends credit to somebody they get paid in a little less than 27 days. So if we want to calculate the cash conversion cycle, it's inventory days plus days of sales outstanding minus the payables deferrable period. 
So they have a very short inventory days, 5.81. Uh, they get paid rather quickly, 26.79 days. And they have a very good payables deferrable period. This is a strong company that negotiates well with suppliers and doesn't pay them for almost 90 days, almost three months, 85.87 days. It turns out that this cash conversion cycle is actually negative, 53.27 days. So essentially, um, the suppliers are extending them credit. They're getting paid well before they have to pay their suppliers. So that's a, a really good position to be in. Now, I actually went to Morningstar, and you don't actually have to do this calculation. If you go to Morningstar and you click on Key Ratios, you can find this information here where they'll give you days of sales outstanding, days of inventory, um, payables period, and they've actually calculated that cash conversion cycle. And you can see that it's negative for all of these years, all 10 years here. So Apple um, is very good in terms of negotiating with its suppliers. It's also very good in terms of getting paid quickly, and it's very good at managing its inventories. Now, this is sort of an aberration. You're not going to see negative numbers very often, certainly not this large a negative number. So what I did is I looked at a few companies here for the same time period, 2015, and IBM had a cash conversion cycle of 89.10 days. So that's almost three months between the time they get, they um, pay for their stuff and the time it takes them to convert these um, raw materials into actual payments from their customers. Ford is even worse, 193.47 days. Again, it's hard to compare these. These are different kinds of businesses. Clearly, it takes Ford a long time to build a car. Perhaps IBM is somewhat different in that they are in a similar line of business to Apple, but they're more of a consulting business. They build mainframe computers. They don't they really got rid of their uh, personal computer business to Lenovo, so very different. GE is uh, at 59.76 days, so about two months. And Procter & Gamble is actually at 5.76 days, so it's not negative, but it's quite a bit lower. In fact, here I grabbed the key ratios uh, for Procter & Gamble um, over this uh, 2015 time period, so it goes from 2006 to 2015, and you can see their cash conversion cycle. What's, what's really interesting here is you can see that it's been going down. So they seem to be converting um, that, those raw materials into cash quite a bit more quickly, and you can look and see where is that happening. It seems that they really have been able to extend their payables period. It was 48 here, it's 78 here, um, their day's sales outstanding hasn't changed that much. They've gotten a little better with their days in inventory, but the biggest improvement probably is the number of days uh, for the payables period. So this is a useful thing to look at in terms of analyzing a company. Again, be careful because different types of companies are in different types of business, so it's not really fair to compare uh, Ford with Apple. But it may be fair to compare Procter & Gamble with some other consumer products companies.